I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. It is such an honor to be here with you. I am Aurora. I am the founder of Aura Hypnosis Healing, as well as the author to Galactic Soul History of the Universe, which we will be talking about today, as well as we have such a beautiful sister with us, the love sister, Marisa Ocachella. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Thank you um, for having me. I'm so happy <laughs> to be here with you, my beloved sister. Oh, she's so beautiful. We have already people commenting here in chat saying uh, Rainbow Sun 77 said, I love Marissa's books. <laughs> uh. Yes, beautiful. So um, before we begin this beautiful live video together, quick uh, introductions. Um, as I said, I am the um, author to Galactic Soul History of the Universe, which is both available in Spanish, in Espanol, y también en Inglés. <laughs> Um, and you can find that in um, under Amazon. And yes, one more thing that I wanted to mention, quick updates, Galactic, Quantum Galactic, Akashic Reading begins on Patreon. Our live certification begins this Sunday. Love to see you there. It's, um, sign up as soon as you can. And then one more thing, we have the retreat where we're training Aura Hypnosis, what we wrote the book about. Um, we are training in that in Chicago live in August. And then um, which, and then we also have a live online workshop in July. Love to see you all there. Join us. That is it for me. Find me under risingphoenixaurora.com. You all know who I am. I love what I do. I love who, what we're here to bridge forth um, for the collective uh, different perspectives of, of this world, of the different souls that we have incarnated here on earth, which, um, which is such an honor to have Marisa here with us. So love, tell us about you. Give us a little, a little quick intro of, um, of you, your background and where we can find you and you know you wrote, wrote several books. So yes. Yeah. Okay. So my name is Marisa Acachella and I am an author and cartoonist. I've written four graphic novels. Uh, my latest is The Big She Bang. The History of the Universe According to God the Mother. And um, let's see, I cartooned for publications like The New Yorker. I've cartooned for magazines. Um, but lately I feel this calling, and I've always felt this calling, that I've always been channeling something higher and bigger than what I am. And I feel so, that's why I feel so connected to you, Aurora. Um, I started uh, drawing since I was three years old. My mother was a shoe designer. She designed shoes for Jackie Kennedy when she was first lady. Mm -hmm. And um, Jackie called her when my mother was designing shoes at Delman and said, can I speak to the designer? And my mother thought it was a prank call. Turns out that they both had size 11 and a half shoes. So mm -hmm. when my mother was working, um, she would do these trend reports and draw these really great looking women wearing great looking shoes. And I started imitating her and that's how I started drawing. So I've been sketching and drawing women and ever since I was three basically. And here I am now uh, writing about God the mother and the saints and women and divinity and the divine human. And which is funny because I thought I was writing a book about the divine feminine, it turns out I was writing about our history as well. I mean, we come from different places, but we're very similar and we're definitely on the same path. So that's a little bit about me. And we could, I think, you know, once we talk more, our stories will evolve, but I just wanted to read something from the masterpiece that you wrote. I love this book so very much, Aurora. Oh, thank you. Well, before we started, we went live. I started mm -hmm. crying when I was telling you how much I love it. Yes. Sniffled yes, during our live. You know, it's because it's like, I know I'm going to be crying throughout yeah. this. And that's what it does to you. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. Well, it's what you do to me. It's your energy and your oh. soul and your beauty mm -hmm. and everything you stand for. So I just want to read something from your book. Okay. Thank you, sister. Yes. Okay. I just want to tell you how brave you are, 
I'm going to start crying. Oh, and I so want what, to what, what part are we at? So are we I'm reading the to... higher self? Who's, who's reading? I'm going to tell you after I finish. Reading. Oh, okay. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. And seriously, my nose is running because I'm crying. Oh, <laughs> okay. oh my God, I should have gotten Kleenexes. Okay. I just want to tell you how brave you are. And I want to thank you, honor you, respect you for what you do. Mm. You do not know how much you're enlightening the path for the rest of us. This is such a brave undertaking and yet you have done, outdone from the worst. So much of selflessness from your end. And this person who's saying this is crying. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And your response is, thank you, beautiful Yeshua, Jesus. So it's Jesus saying this about you. Oh. And when I was reading this the other night, I mean, your book is so beautiful and so special. I didn't want to rush it. I just wanted to savor everything. There's so much here. And when I read this, I was like sobbing, just like I am now. Oh, there goes my blue eyeshadow. <laughs> but it's just, there's, this is so beautiful, such a beautifully, beautiful channeled piece of work. I, I just love you so much. And I'm so Yes, just our 13th hour, 111. Uh, it's that right now oh, wow. right now yes as okay. you're seeing it it's yeshua's hour the 13th hour oh wow okay <laughs> now this, oh, that's amazing and i love your response i love you dearly you your worlds your words mean the world to me thank you so i just wanted to start with that oh my goodness you've made me cry thank you sister um that's one of my favorite chapters not because sure yes he is talking to me but the truth is that everyone can relate can relate to that in some form in many in an in infinity of forms we are all working and assisting the collective in such vastness that we don't even sometimes recognize this stop for a minute and realize how how we are shifting collective and, and the organic timelines so yes and the fact that yeshua you can feel his essence talking through it you know, vibrating out through that chapter, which was chapter three. And it just, yeah, it's just, it's beautiful. Thank you. I, I had no idea you were going to do that. So thank you, sister. That was so beautiful. Uh, it's been hard. It's, it's hard because, you know, we talk about these strong things like my lab experiments, you know, uh, human abductions, babies being abducted from the wombs, you know, um, archons and reptilians and what are you know these negative polarized entities we go through the history of it so Yeshua in that time a little background to that is I was in a time where I was and then you go out into the spiritual community and spiritual community is telling you that entities don't exist and uh, that's not real mm -hmm. and you're being I was being bashed in all forms of ways and my viewers know I don't normally talk about this kind of stuff but I think you brought that out of me and um energetically physically i felt like my spirit was kind of like beat up like you know you've been after too many archonic battles when people are oppressing you like that they don't realize that they're connected to an archon and that energy is in some form trying to infringe upon the person that you're throwing it at that you're directing it to that your in intention is going to so that was a session that was very important to me because i felt beat up mm -hmm. and it just it lifted me and it was just the hope that that kept me going mm -hmm. and i feel that in many forms all of us have gone through that you know where you're trying to follow your heart in some whatever it is that you're trying to create or uh, you know blossom through and you're beat up and you told so many ways that you're wrong mm -hmm. and and but you keep going you know, and we have beautiful benevolent beings like Yeshua who talk through these, through these past life regressions of our book. And oh, thank well, you for starting it off with that. But I have much I want to talk about your book too. So go ahead. Okay. So, I mean, I just literally, I just kept rereading and rereading and reading this channel. Oh, and, sister. So, and I just love when you say sometimes we will hold a strong light. It's you talk about the strong light, like we do come under attack from others, like you've mentioned, do have those lower frequencies of hatred and envy. Yes, viewing things from the higher realm and understanding and forgiving and loving them. I just love 
your words and I just love yes what you're saying here so and I relate so much to everything you write I mean I love the Thank way you. you start off the book when with that child who with a black yeah orb and the spikes and entering child trafficking then yes yes and then the one child who rejects it because he's shielded I want very much to talk about the shielding yes yes thank you thank you um I wanted to to add is that you mentioned about how you feel my love and you love talking to me I think it takes a very beautiful being uh, because one of the other things that Yeshua was talking about in that chapter is that they would say, because I would channel infinite love, they say, love doesn't sell too much <laughs> <laughs> and it's not as popular. So uh, it takes a, a beautiful soul to recognize the love that you see in me is the mirror that you see within yourself. And all our viewers here today are a matching vibration to this infinite love that they can express as well. So thank you for pointing that out. But uh, yes. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to everybody watching. And it's so great to connect with everybody. And I know how you all feel about how great it is to connect with Aurora. So Thank you all for being here. And thank you so much again, Aurora. I can't say thank you. Thank you. And someone's <laughs> asking, can you give us her book title again? So I think they're talking about you. Okay. I'll <laughs> hold it up again. It's The Big Shebang, The History of the Universe According to God the Mother. Yes. And then mine is Galactic Soul History of the Universe, in case you missed the beginning. But you, you're on my channel, so you know. <laughs> okay. Yes, love. Go ahead. You can go with what you were going to mention. And then from there, I'd love to talk about your book. Okay, so, I mean, I was talking about, you go into shielding with Dolores at Canon. I mean, I, I just love what your, your interaction with her, where she talks about, okay, when the flash comes, um, I'm still crying, sorry. I know, me too. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that there's 30% darkness left, um, the timelines. Somebody um, said, Becca, she said, I'm sure we're all crying. Yes, she blesses us. Uh, <laughs> Are you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, be that fire, you're the fire. I'm trying to find the thing about the shielding. Uh, Okay, she does talk about shielding. Oh, yes. Yes, you yes. Say there is a, you, you teach shielding for us to shield for the benefits of clients, but I feel like it's very important, you know, for us to shield and protect our energy. I mean, it's interesting because I was, I posted something that I couldn't believe I got attacked so hard, harshly on Facebook, and it was like, mm. it was overwhelming, and it was, and you know, I had a hard time dealing with it because I, I didn't shield before I posted it Yes, and I didn't protect myself and I really got like slammed, but, and it's fine. It's totally okay. But I feel like next time I need to know how to protect myself and I need to be a little bit more articulate about what I'm saying. So I think preparation and knowing what it is to put out there and like really just asking for higher guidance is really important. But anyway, so the shielding thing, what do you think of, how do you go about shielding? Yes, um, it is infinitely uh, significant in this time and space through the 3D because we're at the densest, therefore. Um, so going into that with Dolores, I was talking to her because not majority of, I'm not going to say exactly, but the majority of people who um, follow her, teachings do not shield and do not believe in it so um and then you know we've been assisting people through this manner because it's extremely important because we're in and out of different brain waves all day long so what happens when we're in and out of different brain waves we're astro traveling we're even sometimes bilocating accidentally in the time and space we are you know our energy body is going to a time and space and if you're not putting a intention you can attract all sorts of uh, parasites and um, entities that are constantly scanning because um, like we talk about in our book and um, Dolores in that chapter said she felt like she was like a broken record or she said something like that because like how many times do I have to tell you that you have to shield? Mm -hmm. um, so what's going on is that you're, we're in a world that 
you know, there is all sorts of levels of vibrations, right? Every person carries a different vibration. So then if you are, for example, let's use your post as an example, which is a really important one. Um, we don't realize that even something as simple as posting something on social media, you can feel an energetic attack. Mm -hmm. um, so you post something and you don't put, say, um, alchemy within it. And you can use like sacred alchemy that, you know, like symbols um, that co that connect to you. You can put force fields. Something that I do is I shield all my platforms. I even, you know, shield my YouTube. I shield my websites. I shield all of it. Um, not only, you know, cars, homes, animal companions and family. I shield the physical as well because I am in the physical realm. So it, I think it can be very ignorant when we don't recognize the fact that we're, we think we're just like this enlightened being. And this happens often mm -hmm. where people think they're so enlightened and they don't realize that they're, you know, they're almighty. And then they don't realize that there's force all around us. So which way will this force go? Will they go to the dark side of like Star Wars or will they go to the, to, you know, the, the force of light? Um, so yeah, everything that I create, even a post, I put, I put like, I do not consent. My brother, beautiful sister, Laura Eisenhower really taught us that, right? Mm -hmm. We've been teaching that this whole time though, but she really taught us with that video. I do not consent. So I put that and I put symbols and I send love to it. And so one of the, uh, yeah. That's so important. I think, especially sending love. I mean, posting something when you're mad or upset is never a good idea because that's what you're going to get back. Exactly. Everything's a matching vibration to itself. Mm -hmm. So something else we teach is um, if you're feeling like a lower vibration, you stop for a minute, you take a deep breath because that whatever you post will match the response will match that vibration because that's attracted. It's like a magnet. It's attracted to one another vibration. Right. Like vibration. Magnets, life attracts like. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. So love that. Thank you yeah. for bringing that up. And I wanted to say one more thing about what you said about uh, forgiveness, mm -hmm. forgiveness of the entities, forgiveness of the reptilians, and even in, in some form forgiveness of the archons, because when you, um, not in a way where you like, you know, Send love to everything organic, the artificial, let's eradicate it and let's burn the crap out of it. You know, that's, that's like, the way <laughs> that's the way we talk. That's the way we teach, mm -hmm. you know, transmute that. <laughs> um, so about the transmutate, transmuting the energy, the alchemy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the forgiveness is so important. What you said, because, um, so long as we don't forgive them, we're stuck in that inverted cycle that the archons wants us to be stuck in. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's of the most importance for us to learn to forgive all types of harm in all forms and just in love. Like we talked in our round table with uh, Don and Laura, we right. talked about how um, just send love. If you send love, then there's nothing for them to feed off. And honestly, they get bored of you. They're like, oh. You're yeah, she's all full of love and like <laughs> uh, yucky. Like she's laughing at us because she does it with a sense of humor. Like they, they don't like being laughed at. <laughs> yeah, they're like love, yucky, ew, you know, uh, like oh, but you know, yeah, send me your light. <laughs> you know? Oh no, don't send me your light, no. <laughs> <laughs> Those, you know. That's them, not us. We want the light. We want the light. Yeah, yes. we want the well, light. they feed off the light. Well, love is what they don't want. They don't so want they feed off the light. Once you get to towards the end of the book, it explains that how they're an absence of light. So they're a constant, infinite hunger of light. Well, that's an true. emptiness, a void. Okay. So that's true because I kind of write about, you know, the whole Eve thing and about how she's a divine spark. And mm -hmm. actually, even before that, where, you know, um, where you see the face of God in the water and the archons like Yaldabaoth sees, sees it and he wants to take that essence. He wants that essence, that spirit for himself and he can't grab it. So he creates a container Adam, right? And he tries mm -hmm. to blow his essence in it, but he doesn't have soul. So that's what they wanted all along. They wanted our divinity, our divine spark. Exactly. So they don't have it. And they will never yeah. have it because they're yeah. artificial. Right, because they're AI. They're artificial. Yeah, they're not organic. Yeah, They're not organic. But I'd love to talk about your book now. 
<laughs> okay. 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 Yay. Okay. So I love how you went in and you started um, explaining some of the divine goddesses, mm -hmm. uh, the, the different fractals truly of divine mother, right? right. I love that okay. because just like you explained in your book, she's been erased, right? She's, she's no worse. She's no problem. I, I mean, like, as can I point something out here? Like, where? Yeah, go ahead. She, I wonder, me, you know, when I first meet God the Mother, she says, you know, I am. The cosmic egg, right? How funny is that? Look, I look at what page I was on to. Oh my god! <laughs> surprised? I thought I was like looking at it. I am Ka the Void. I am Barbello, first power of the Pleroma, the divine realm, which is what we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. I am Shakti, the life force that moves through the universe. I am Shekinah, and then I say I'm confused. She says Amaditi. We're all incarnations of the same goddess, the mother, mm -hmm. and then she says I am the Holy Spirit, and then she says. I am God, the mother, and I have been wholly ghosted. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically, I wrote the whole book for her because mm -hmm. when I was, even when I was four, I was when, like, I went to Catholic school, right? Mm -hmm. And Sister Bedalius would say, God, you know, created all everything. God created all living things. And I was like, wait a minute, but, you know, what about moms? What about the mother? And I would always get in trouble for asking questions. Yeah. So I've always wondered where what happened to God the mother. So that's where this book came from. What a beautiful creation. Thank you, sister. And mother infinitely loves you for doing this because it's, it's, it's kid friendly, right? It looks, uh, there's well, some parts. Well, I mean like the Jesus and Mary Magdalene, you think that's kid friendly? I haven't got to that part yet. Okay. Well, there's that. Uh, so what age you think higher? I don't know, maybe 17. I don't know. 17 don't or know. older maybe 13 yeah 13 or older and then so is it just that part um let's see well just because i love it we're reading it to our children right so we'll know to skip that part <laughs> yeah. well let's skip that page first take a look at it first i mean like did you get to the Nerea and the I, e part i'm like at the part where you start intro they start coming one by one and they're introducing mm-hmm like um, the part where, uh, yeah, Nora. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay, so past that. Past Eve, I think we're okay. Okay, it's like, beautiful. What happens to Eve? You know, <laughs> she gets attacked physically, but not where her spirit leaves and goes to the tree mm -hmm. of knowledge. Okay. Yeah, so. So I think it'd be really important for parents if they would like to read it because it, it has some phenomenal information on there. That is very uh, empowering and all that we, you know, teach here on this YouTube channel. is like releasing the, the control, you know, the programming. And, and I love that overall the essence of mother was made through this book. And your um, illustrations are very captivating, full of color. And they're beautiful. They're very attention. Like they really um, help you see the picture and go into the expression of this book so thank you for that thank you i really you know <laughs> it's beautiful okay so there's a couple things that i wanted to uh look at okay okay um i love your uh, explanation of you know creation itself and creation that is looked at as like a bang right a bang of consciousness. orgasm yeah I, yes. my, exactly <laughs> i mean it's like first god the mother gives birth to god the father right he had to come from someplace uh-huh and a virgin birth exactly that's what i was just saying i who, where was i saying that i can't remember but she's the represent all oh, the life the last uh channeling that i had uh -huh. um she is the representation to the first virgin birth because she created him from within exactly right? yes. that's where that comes from that's from yeah from yeah Adam. sacred birthing from within so it just explains how we are these sacred birthers from within our body and how we you know we've been talking about that all on my youtube channel birthing and sacred birthing and how and we birth. the womb. yeah in the womb but yeah um so um, I love that you got that as well. And then um, there was a part where I was, oh, yes. The, I love the part where you were at. Um, 
how then, you know, Sophia and her twin flame started creating mm -hmm. uh, creation itself. Yeah. Um, and then I love the part, <laughs> this actually connects to some of what we teach is the angelics, how they create the, and I love the name that you called them, lum luminaries. The luminaries, right? Ah, uh, yes. They're angelics. I mean, we're, that's interesting they, because. They illuminate. Yes. Well, the fact that we are writing about very similar things mm -hmm. and coming from the same place, which is why I really wanted to talk to you because. Mm -hmm. You talk about, you know, the luminaries, the angelics, right? I came from it from a Gnostic point of view, the mm -hmm. Pleroma, which is the heavenly realm, which is like the first creation mm -hmm. and God, the mother, God, the father and Sophia and Elilith. And then you talk a lot about uh, Archangel Michael, who I love so much, but it's very interesting that, you know, we both come from we both talk about the same, same thing and about Christos yes. and Sophia and how they- In my book, we don't quite talk about this, mm -hmm. but in my YouTube channels, all my live videos, we talk about what you're speaking of. Okay. But I am, have, I am planning, uh, we are in the future writing a book of uh, angelics and their stories. Because I'm told, I'm just really obsessed by the angelics, and yes, a lot of the, a lot of the angelics are in your book. Like um, a lot of angels show up when when you're doing your yeah sessions, like Saint Michael, Raphael, um, and even Dolores Cannon was Raphael. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just love the angelics and how they're like characters, and they're but they're real in your book. Yes. And how like they protect people and they just come in like and just offer assistance. And I think that's one of the things that is so beautiful about what you're writing is that you just, it's, it's so comforting to know that these beings are here and that all we have to do is ask for them. And, and Dolores and you both say that anybody can be open to channel if you just are open. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, uh, yeah, the angels are, and you, and you know, what they tell me is that sometimes when we can't heal something from the client, we have to call on an angel. The higher self can't heal it. Like they say, we gotta, we have to call on the archangels because they're the very first representation, as you explained here, the, the first race of creation. Mm -hmm. So that th you can say that they have the godlike source abilities so they're the very first expressions of source mm -hmm. so of course oh if you can't do something the archangels absolutely can within all infinity of time and space right right mm -hmm. yes you said yeah. especially you said that in one of your first chapters mm -hmm. the archangels came in yeah i mean i just think this is really i can't go on i can't like stuff thinking and talking about your book it's really such an incredible masterpiece thank you <laughs> thank you and it, you know what's really uh beautiful what you said it actually connects with a session i had this week mm -hmm. and they she said that we needed to communicate furthermore on angels they said or did you know that a lot of alien races that are incarnated on earth don't even know about angels i have never connected to them and it, and then she said this is creating a like what she was explaining is that it's creating an imbalance on earth mm -hmm. because here we are the very first race of creation, but yet you don't know of them or connect to them because of course the archons don't want you to connect to them because at that point you're starting to free yourself from the inverted matrix. And you're, you know, if you're, if you're talking to them, they're going to help you with all that they are of creation with all the source that they are to remove the infringement and help you shift out of the inverted into the organic matrix. Well, that's really important. And mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that's something that I wrote about pretty extensively in the Big Bang, the whole fact that our world, you know, has been inverted. And, you know, I have every, you know, good is, I, I say good is good, bad hides behind good, good, good is mistaken for bad black is white black white is black i mean we live in a world of inversion but once we realize that and realize that we could turn that 
we have the potential and we can turn it around, everything makes sense. From that, everything makes sense. Yes, yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And then there, there's one more thing I wanted to touch base on there. And then you said that they uh, they created their their beautiful daughter, which I didn't know you spoke of that there. We talk about that, how they, their very first creation was the daughter of the flame. Yes. And so, then her twin flame mm-hmm. and her twin flame is Archangel her, Michael. Oh, okay. So are you talking... Are you talking so about you na- I know you name it a different name. Right, um, right. But, um, but he is the first, say, um, fractalization of father coming out of the collective consciousness. Okay. Um, Archangel Michael. Okay. And that's why everyone feels like, everyone always feels so comforted and like you're in protected space. And um, so... Uh, I love that, how you express that there. Can you talk about Michael a little bit and about, you know, how he, like, where he came from and um, what his mission is? I Just like you said, he's the first fractal. But, I mean, I just, I have had so many visions of Michael. He comes to me in dreams all the time, all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I even go to St. Michael, the Archangel Church here in Jersey. Oh. <laughs> so, and I'm very connected to the Blessed Mother and Mary Magdalene and mm-hmm. Sophia. But can you talk a little bit about the history of Archangel Michael? Yes. So, when creation, um, so basically after um, Mother Sophia, virgin birthed um, uh, father. Mm-hmm. Um, crystal then together they created they birthed their first child Mm -hmm. their first child was an expression that ventured out into the stars Mm -hmm. which was the daughter of the flame right now her daughter the flame then just like mother created she birthed out her twin flame which is archangel michael which is actually um, together, Archangel Michael and um, Arch- Archangel Helio, Lucifer. So together they make Divine Father, the very first one. But then, like how cells, molecules, atoms split from one another, eventually they split from one another, twin brothers, they're twin brothers. And uh, you can say in many forms, um, it's, it's backwards, like you said. Mm-hmm. Helio Lucifer is actually the infinite light of source. Mm-hmm. And then Michael is more of the fierce, organic um, parts of having uh, organic darkness within him, you know, like just like we all do, where he goes in and he can scan darkness and he's really good at picking out those parasites. That's why mm-hmm. he's so amazing. Mm-hmm. So then, then Lucifer is his light. And then join together their what we call is call him Archangel Four, mm-hmm. or um, what I call him is Prince. He mm-hmm. likes he he likes to go by Prince, the Prince, and the daughter of the flame is the first princess of creation. Okay, that's and a- then that's his twin. That's their twin flame, right? Okay. So that's different from what I wrote, but I wanted to hear your what you yeah. thought because. And then you also, in your book, talk about Lucifer and Jesus talks about him as well. Yes, he talks about him. I found that very interesting, you know, that. That's right. Yeah, where he, let's see, he basically says he's misunderstood, so. Yes, because he's the mirror. Right. He's the mirror to people's entities and um, he's the light. <laughs> I so, had a session this morning and the person was telling me, how people feel sometimes it scares they get scared by by this person mm-hmm. and um and then i explain it's because they're seeing the mirror they're seeing the reflection your energy is so bright and bright and full of love light like source like lucifer helio is mm-hmm. that it starts bringing out their inner demons and their entities and they don't know what the what the heck is going on with them because this they probably start moving in their body and they're like 
telling them, get away from this person. They're evil. <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. So, I mean, it's just, what's interesting to me and what's fascinating is that we're always told one thing. And then when you do research, it's the opposite of what we've been told. I mean, mm-hmm. this is like another point that I keep writing about. And that is that our whole history, her history has been inverted. Um, there's a point in my book where uh, I talk about Hypatia, who is this great philosopher, right? Mm-hmm. And she lived in Alexandria and she's, she was a great speaker and she was killed. But they, then they burned down the Library of Alexandria, which held all the books that are all our history books. And some of those books, a lot of those books can be found in the Vatican Library, right? And that has a lot of, and our history is held back from us and that's where it is. So, I mean, we were told that we are made from dust when from Eve who came down from the Pleroma, right? As a daughter of Sophia, as a daughter of God the mother, right? She's a divine spark and we are not made of dust. We're made of stardust. We are celestial and terrestrial, right? We have both. We have, so it's just interesting that that is, it's interesting and it's tragic, but ultimately I think because of the great awakening and because we're reclaiming our true inheritance, I think we will be victorious. And I feel that, you know, very strongly that we, we are embracing the light and we are going to reclaim our divinity and evolve and ascend and transmute this energy. But yes. it's, oh, it's heartbreaking that we haven't done this until now, right? Yeah, because there was that much um, control over. And then we agreed to come in at that type of lower density control. Mm-hmm. And then we needed to figure out through time and space in our years of growing, how do we get out of that on 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 amnesia (laughs) so you know yes i use yeah yeah. go ahead no i was going to say that um it's the thing is it's like what we're doing is we're coming back to who we truly are who we are from the beginning we're just realizing our highest potential and our divinity and reconnecting to our all of our strands of our dna like laura talks about the junk dna but i mean so it's just, it's ironic that who we are going to be, become is who we really are, but we are just realizing it now. So like full circle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, yes. The, the now, the future, the press, the past of us. Yes. So anyway, as you were saying, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's okay. I just uh, was just wanted to share. I just love, I felt that that's what you were trying to tell here in that page where you said that she created her first daughter and then her twin flame. So that is also a representation, I think, in many forms to uh, Yeshua and Magdalene, right? It is, absolutely. Yes, in many forms like that in history. Yes, later on when Mm -hmm. I introduced Mary Magdalene, I asked her, are you the female Christ? And she says, yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, Jesus was Christos and, you know, they're they're twin flames. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and and who they are really? It's. I think it's. I think Laura once said that they're the great liberators, but they basically show us the way for us to reclaim our divinities through their love and how they, you know, sacred sex. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll, here's a part that maybe might not be suitable for twelve-year-olds, but can I show that page? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, here we are. Yeah, so here it is, basically. Uh huh. How, you know, beautiful. Yeah, they they both went to school in Egypt. They both raised their Kundalini serpents. We know all about this. The black serpent is a divine feminine. The golden serpent is a divine male you touch on how there's both male and female within us. You asked that of Jesus, yes, 
I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, and I asked a similar question, male, female, you know, what if you're, um, everyone has a male and female serpent within them. You say the same thing, but tantric me mechanics are the same. Yes. So anyway, yes. so yes, they're, but they teach us love and love is the most powerful force in the universe. And yes. earth is, and I, I call what they, their love, the divine correction, turning the world around through love. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, through sacred sex, actually, you remember your memories, <laughs> um, you activate yourself and your, you know, your other half through sacred union. And uh, I love that, that you shared that there. <laughs> so beautiful. Thank you. Um, thank you, sister. And then um, let me see, there was a couple other things I want. Oh, uh, we have a few questions before I keep okay. talking here. Um, so um, someone's asking a question for you. They said, Marissa, do you have a list of books for children too? Love that they have illustrations. Uh, a list of books for children? Leah, that you illustrated? Did you illustrate any children's books? Oh, I've never illustrated children's books. Oh, okay. Thanks for asking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, reaching the children right now is such a vast time. And I think a lot of parents are looking for a book that has um, a freeing information like this so that the child, you know, even though they might have to go to school, they can still read things that can expand their imagination and question the programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's really important because a lot of children are really being indoctrinated yes. into, you know, mm -hmm. the matrix, which we're trying to break free of. So, yeah, I love how you talk about here. I'm reading your book, huh? eyes of when the eyes of two souls meet who separated from one another as twin flames, no matter the realm and dimension they will always remember and feel this deep resonance and understanding as to one another as Bella and her twin flame did. I just love that our whole mm. chapter. And yes, because I, even though it's past life um, regression, they ha I channeled information after each chapter that really puts, if you missed anything, it puts it together. You know, or if you understood it, now you understand it even at a deeper level. I love that. And I love when you say the bravest of hearts chooses to remain open in a world that views its kindness as weakness. I just love how you recap everything. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sister. And you know what else really struck me and kind of was like, so, it was so heartbreaking. Your chapter on the love story with Sasquatch and the young <gasps> woman and how they captured him. And, and they're so gentle. And they're so gentle. And, they're, and he was an ancient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it, sometimes, like being human is just so frustrating, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It can be very frustrating. It's it, like, it can be great, but it's like sometimes it's like, oh, get me off this planet already. <laughs> <laughs> well, we made this deal. We're here for a reason. We're here for each other. So we got to stick it out, but really sometimes it gets trying. That's why it's I'm like, oh, come so on. Like, oh, like really? Oh, like yeah. again? <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know that feeling. <laughs> well, I know. So I experienced that recently. Um, but then, and then I remember I was like, no, no, we got to keep going. <laughs> I know, I know. It's the <laughs> But yeah, I, I completely understand. Well, and I then, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going back to, mm -hmm. um, again, back to the Dolores Cannon chapter two, mm -hmm. which is when she says, I just love this phrase, because I feel this way too. The whole thing about coming out of the spiritual closet, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, it's like uncomfortable sometimes when, you know, like I said, I posted and should have shielded myself, but, you know, I'm definitely out of the spiritual closet. That's for sure. But I mean, it's it gets really uncomfortable sometimes and i guess like the thing is to fight the fear and just move forward anyway but also to protect yourself but there's just so many gems in here when you talk about an infinity of gems it, it, there is an infinity of gems i mean 
the truth think- is that you're really only into maybe three chapters, right? So, or uh-huh. four maybe. Yeah. And my goodness, by the time you get to the middle and the end, the climax, mm-hmm. it, the majority of people start it again. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I mean, I definitely, definitely want to. Because they can't get enough of it. You know, like they start it again. I, I feel the same. I definitely want to have another session where we talk more because I definitely yeah. want to talk about everything. Yeah, we could definitely um, do it on your, your YouTube channel, which everyone subscribe to Marissa's YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. I've added the links there under the the comments under yeah details and i'm gonna post um your links on the facebook (laughs) posting the postings that i've done too and everybody please follow and i have a session with you coming up i'm so excited i know (laughs) what a blessing (laughs) i wanted to talk really quick about eve okay so amazing eve um and and how this is another expression of mother, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. In an incarnated form. Right, right. And then um, how she was. I love the part where he, she's like, because what they explain is that many of these, uh, so like the feminine carry energy through their through their voice or their essence of their mouth. So I love when they're like, when she's like over him and she's like, this essence because they show like <sighs> breath is life, right? Yes. So she's literally breathing <sighs> her essence into him and creating life into him. Isn't yes. that beautiful? So, yeah, I'll show that where. Yeah. Right here. Uh-huh. Right there. Yep. Yeah. Where and Adam is like, star energy. Yes, where Adam is like left mm-hmm. on the ground because the archons yeah. couldn't breathe life into him because they're they don't have a their ai and eve sees him and breathes life into adam so eve really is a divine spark and adam says you will be called mother of the living because your spark of light has given me life Mm -hmm. and then what happens is the archons see her and that they saw that eve was more brilliant than they were because she's got the divine spark she's divinity and they say, who is this luminous woman? And Yaldabaoth and his cronies concocted there, right then and there, the divide and conquer humanity master plan. And they say, first we'll put Adam to sleep and we'll compel Adam to believe the woman serves him and rules over her. And they yep. implant the false memory that, that Eve came from Adam's rib. Exactly. So, yes. yeah. So, so that's the thing. And that's the first mm-hmm. That's the genesis of the divine and conquer humanity master plan. And I even love how you mm-hmm. go ahead. Now, I was just going to say it's like yeah. now it's Democrat versus Republican, black, white. Yeah. You know, yeah. Maskers and not maskers. I love how you showed how um, this uh, Eve, you know, blinded the archon, archons, right? Yeah. She was um, so natural. Because truly, when we're walking a path of infinite love, they cannot. We, we do blind them because they can't see what we're about to decide on or create, right? And then, um, so love is their blindness, you know? It's their weakness. And then um, I love also how um, when she merged into the tree mm-hmm. in uh, chapter Leviathan, which tends to be everyone's, one of their favorites, it's phenomenal. Mm-hmm on the fallen angel so we talk to a beautiful fallen angel that has in- incarnated and basically is trying to uh to fix his karma and he's so beautiful oh my goodness beautiful oh, beautiful it makes you cry that chapter will keep you crying the whole time okay can you talk so, a little bit about that yeah that yeah so one of the saying. one of the um comments that he says on there mm-hmm. is that he says well the creator um created uh, I don't know how he says it, but he says, first, the creator created a tr- the tree, mm-hmm. a tree. And I was like, oh, my goodness. We teach the tree of life, the tree of knowledge. We teach that through the Kabbalah mm-hmm. in one of our cl- courses. So I love how she, uh, Eve merges into the tree because they, the archons, you know, don't want her to go into the tree of knowledge because then at that point she's going to expand and they want to keep her 
controlled and like ignorant, right? Yeah. So then, and the tree, this tree represents literally the tree of life, the tree of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and, right. and what they explain is creation itself is like a tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talk about that on our YouTube channel, how trees are pillars of light, a source. Right. So hug a tree because you're hugging a source ray. Uh, uh, you're, that's what you're literally hugging. So when she merges with the tree, I think that's uh, a representation to merging to the infinite uh, knowledge, wisdom, infin in the infinity of creation, right? I love that you say that. Mm -hmm. Also, when she does hide in the tree to escape mm -hmm. her soul, her, oh, okay. her light body by, from being raped by the archons, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and when she when she bites into the apple right the apple is her it's her divine spark it's her wisdom because That's it's her right. knowledge her seed her seed right so she's mm -hmm. literally biting into herself uh-huh she's biting into her own her spark her knowledge and then when adam mm -hmm. bites into the apple he's biting into the wisdom of sophia that's right. Seeing how that works out, right? Yeah. And you also talked about the tree being the womb. You, didn't you tell that's me? That's right. There's, yeah. yeah, a meditation that I teach that's on my YouTube channel where you go in and you sit inside and it's uh, on their tree of life. Well, we have many, by the way, my assistant um, checking out chat. Um, so she'll probably add that there. But um you go in and you sit in a fetus position in the in the womb of the tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I'll talk about that. And yeah, then you, you did. I love that. <laughs> and then you can literally recharge your entire essence in that tree because it's the tree of knowledge. It's creation itself. The, the tree of life. It's creation itself, and you're inside it. Mm -hmm. You can, you know, as you rise the the tree of as you write as you come down what we teach through the kabbalah teachings of quantum galactic akasha we actually begin sunday as we're talking about this on patreon as we're above and we come down that becomes a tree of knowledge because we're going down the dimensions and then but as we rise no no yeah as we come down the tree tree of life and as we rise up it becomes very the tree of life because the more that we go up the dimensions, the more the memory we gain back and activations to gain to back to source ultimately, um, you know, to, but yeah. So that's the full circle thing again. Too. It's a full circle. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Going back to who we really are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all expression is based on the tree of knowledge because if we w want to come out of source, we need to birth out from the tree of life. Mm -hmm. We have to come out of source. And then we gain the tree of knowledge as we incarnate in every aspect that we incarnate, right? In the dimensions, in the that. universes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I love the part where there's like a fiery, oh, <laughs> there's like fire come and, and how the fire, you know, stops the archons in that time when she's when she um yeah. fire mm -hmm. the firing event fiery avenging angel yes yes that's right here I'll show <laughs> <laughs> i think we all need to embody that right now like I feel all of that. us well we you were become a fiery angel well okay because you're rising mm -hmm. phoenix aurora you're very fiery yes i am <laughs> you're, you're, all, you're all you're all about the fire so yeah I can understand you responding to that. I mean, I definitely respond to it. I think I'm more of a blue flame, though. <laughs> you always tell me I'm blue. Yeah, you. Yeah, definitely, you are. And I, you're, you're. I think that's also your connection with Michael because he's a blue flame as well, and he's got electricity. Yes, this element. Is. Yes, it is my and also like with uh, my connection Lighten. with my Blessed Mother too. She's the blue army, which I think. You know, Michael is a part of that's his army. Yeah, I've always felt a connection with that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, so let me see if they have any other questions here. Someone wants to know, I don't, I'm not going to say the name, but I'm going to read it out just because they wrote it. 
I think it's a spiritual leader of some kind, but I won't say the name. They say this person talks about good AI in the fifth and higher dimensions. She also compares our consciousness to the AI. She says that it's the same since we are all one. Oh God, no. <laughs> what do you think know. about it? I don't really think that's true. I mean, uh, <laughs> I've been having discussions with people about AI and how they think it's a good thing. Ah, uh, no. Uh, yeah. If you think that you are one with the AI, then you are allowing a compromise to come into your soul and you become Archon, basically. Yeah. Um, so that's what they're doing. So that would be an Archonic download to whoever this was um and then the arconic um and then that's what they have in them is like an archon virus that's telling them this then you know people believe that once the minute that they listen to this and then they agree to it then the archons come in and they start integrating in <laughs> yeah so no yes so no because that's no. what i wanted to do ever since they saw the image of God in the water or ever since, you know, their conception. So they want it, they want to be us and they want to turn us into them. They want to do the old switcheroo. Yes, because they've inverted the fact that we are all one. So in the inverted matrix, if you say we are all one, they can that is a form of tricking you in an unconscious manner to say you are one with AI. So when you say we're all one, you know, be specific that we are only one with organic, you know, we are one with organic love light, organic consciousness of source, not one with AI ever, ever. And never, ever, ever. No, no. So I've been doing things like to protect myself from the AI element, like mm -hmm. the fennel seeds, shungite charcoal yeah. every day protective yes. shields i've been doing oh i love your shielding oh yes yeah. that was just a quick little a uh, little one but um through my courses we go more in depth on how to use the force but i think it's a great foundation for them to begin yes very and and your very beginning right here mm -hmm. yeah that like, was so that's so important Yes, it's so important. The Merkaba is the, the most powerful um, shielding we can use. I was just talking to Metatron again this week mm -hmm. uh, through a person's session. And then he was talking about how to use the, this, um, to use our Merkaba because of course everyone has it. And it is our literal transportation through time and space. There it is, thank you, love. And he says, Aurora, he said, you know, at all the points, um, he says vision circles. So as they're spinning, so not only are, is the top one spinning clockwise drawing in, he said at every point there's rings. Of, oh, wow. So then not only are you, is your Merkaba spinning clockwise at the top, bottom one counterclockwise, right? right. And then there's rings going. Wow. At every point. Okay. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I'm writing that down. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That is amazing. I mean, I love this. I've been doing this every morning, seriously. And I have, um, if it's okay with you, we're going to take uh, two more questions. Is that okay with you? Sure. sure absolutely. Okay. And then we'll conclude it there. Okay. Uh, so someone's asking, is the Bible revised by the Illuminati? What do you think about that, Marissa? I think depends on what um, edition you're talking about. Like the King James <laughs> was rewritten by Sir Francis Bacon, who was one of the it's the genesis of freemasonry okay mm -hmm. and it definitely has illuminati freemasonry context within it i can be more i mean i i can be specific um i have to do the research i mean i have the research somewhere mm -hmm. um but yeah i would say yeah i i think it is Definitely. Um, the majority of it has been um, compromised uh, for the for their purposes of negative oppression. <laughs> yes, and that's why a lot of the real books, our real history, is under lock and key in the Vatican. Yeah, and then how they say, you know, Magdalene is a slut, you know? Right. Booker, right? She was the most powerful. Ridiculous. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Can I talk about oh, what you wrote about the Blessed Mother? Yeah, um, yeah, what, what, what did I write? Ah! 
<laughs> oh, oh my god! I mean, oh. all right. Uh, the, the Yeshua chapter. Oh, what he says about her. Hmm. Okay. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Um, the whole Adam and Eve, male, female thing goes in. We talked about that. Ah, oh, about the mother. Oh, okay. Okay. You, you talk about um, how the blessed mother, how do you think a mother can endure being present while the son is being tortured? Oh, God. Okay, I'm gonna start crying again. If she is not one brave soul, I do not know what you call it. But she has this heart. Her heart had, was crushed multiple times. That's the reason why they always portray her as this helpless woman because they made her. Talk about inversion. They took her son and tortured her son. What do you expect a mother's heart would feel? I've not seen a heart that was so brave as hers, pure and full of love. I don't know if one could ever ever match the heart she has. I'm so, I mean, when you think of her that way, mm -hmm. right, as opposed to like the weeping mother, as like the, the brave enduring heart, the heart, he says that endures whatever comes, it's not easy. It's most of the time it's heavy, but her love, her endurance was shining through. That is so beautiful. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, thank you for bringing that up. That actually connects me to um, the Divine Mothers channeling I just channeled Saturday. Mm -hmm. They talked about a weeping mother, a tale mm -hmm. from Mexico where they call her La Llorona, the weeping mother. Mm -hmm. And I love how you just connected that to that in many forms could be also Mother Mary and how they always say she's weeping mother. Mm -hmm. But yet she is the most strongest soul of creation. To have endured knowing that in many forms as you were reading that she's raising her child and she knew that something was going to happen to him because she was a seer right. you know and it's like you're raising this child even though there's going to be you know say a slaughter a um a crucifixion and yet you look at him every day into his eyes and that beautiful pure soul and yet that's going to happen to him and it's like, wow, that takes the greatest, I think, strength as a mother for what she did for us. Absolutely. And how we can carry that joy as mothers to love our children and in this infinite love that she carried. I love her children. Mm -hmm. It just it, it, it puts motherhood to another level. It does. It also puts the heart of human in another level because if she could withstand that, right? and still have the courage to go on and not be discouraged because co the, the core were core of courage, coraggio, cuore is heart, not be disheartened and still go on and still have that courage. It's, if that is an inspiration, what is? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you, my goodness. You're just pointing out just such beautiful, <laughs> beautiful parts. I just love your book. Oh, and we love you. Thank you, Marissa. And we love your book. <laughs> I think like you really illustrated Michael in this one. Like, I love this one right here. Uh, Michael. Oh, I feel that that's who you illustrated. Can I get it? To yeah. Well, it, you know, it's funny when I did that drawing. Uh -huh. I, uh, I was thinking, well, I just wanted him to be like the most glorious, beautiful angel. And I also thought... Robert Plant as an angel, like I inverted. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. Michael's loving it. <laughs> Beautiful. And then um, one last question. Sure. Um, and then someone's asking, "What does a serpent represent, and how is the serpent in Egypt different, or does it represent the same?" What do you think of the serpent? Because I see how the serpent actually in your book is talking to Eve, right? Right. And it's so, that seed of knowledge. Right. So the serpent right. is really uh, a symbol of wisdom because the serpent is also Eve saying, okay, I'll go back to that point because I just think it's better to, after Eve 
after her spirit left her, the serpent says, Eve, who me? Who, Eve, Eve, it's me. Who's me? I'm you, right? Here is a serpent. You're me? Yes, you. Believe you, me. You're right not to listen to that rapacious psychopath who thinks he's God, Yaldabaoth, the demigod. Eden is a jail meant to lull you into enslavement, but the fruit self shall set you free, which is the fruit, which is the divine feminine, which is wisdom, which is Eve, which is from the tree, and also Eve is the serpent. So yeah, so it's funny that that's the irony there, but then also you have the lizards, the reptilians, which is the Yaldabaoth character. So it's it depends on what serpent you're talking about. Yes, yes. There's us negative serpents, and then there's um, serpents, the, and then there's reptilians. Yes, yes, yes. Ex exactly. Um, oh, I, I was going to say something about what you said about that. That was beautiful. Feet of knowledge, and then also the snake can also be seen as Lilith. Yes. So the other form of a form of Lilith, mm -hmm. which is um, the, the organic darkness. She's the organic darkness, and she is. Because in order for us to um, venture out, we have to become familiar to the organic darkness because we have to travel through the infinity of it. So we need to become, yeah, a, a queen. Um, what is the word? Um, comfortable within it. So I think she really represents that because in order for the spirit to expand and venture out and grow, it does need to go into the, the organic darkness of this universe. Mm -hmm. So that snake, the serpent really represents that. Can can you go through, the, can you uh, listen and listen to, but then the organic snake is still her, right? The serpent is still Eve. Right, right. And because Lilith and Eve are one and the same. So Eve is the light and Lilith is the organic darkness. Okay. So it's that beautiful unity of how we need to embrace both our organic light and dark. And yeah. So going into, if you want to know and expand the soul, you have to go into the tree of knowledge, which is the organic, which is the snake and which is the organic. Yeah. I love the way you articulated that. Yes, yes. That's a really beautiful explanation of Lilith and Eve. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love Lilith. She's beautiful. She reminds me of how sexy we are, mm -hmm. how powerful we are, and how how to use our s sensuality in a form where we don't have to hide, where we can express ourselves um, and be this sexual orgasm that we are. <laughs> right? Well, I think for us, I yes, I agree. I mean, for us to sort of like, malign you know our sexuality has been maligned and sidelined and slut shamed and yeah you know it's it's great that it's a beautiful thing when we embrace it yes and she's the embodiment of that if anybody's yeah. trying to you know um one of the parts you you had said um uh fiery something about fiery i can't remember what you said but there's this, there's a, actually, it goes back to the channeling I had where I actually sang <laughs> and then I sang the La Llorona song. And then um, in this part, she says, you guys heard it. Um, it said, yo soy, yo soy, no, yo soy como el chile verde, llorona, picante, pero sabrosa. So what that means is I am like the green pepper. I am spicy, but I am delicious. <laughs> I love that. You have a beautiful voice, by the way, but why am I not surprised? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I think we all need to walk that path. Like, let's be embody that part because that part is also very much a part of our organic darkness that like once we bring them into into unity and we because then we're starting to learn how to self-love ourselves in a way of making love to ourselves in all beauties that we are, right? Right, right. Our I, skin, our hair, our eyes, the way we walk, we are beautiful creations. I agree. And just accept us, mm -hmm. you know, all of us and who we are. And I just, again, I just can't 
say how much I love this book and everything that you you are and what you're about and uh, the light you. you bring and the and the knowledge and the wisdom <laughs> the divine feminine wisdom of all of that you are thank you sister as I feel the same exact way about you you are beautiful thank you Marissa is there anything else you want to add before we finish up um I just, again, want to say this is a masterpiece. <laughs> thank you for gifting the world with your brilliance. And this is a masterpiece. <laughs> it is a glorious way to learn some of our past divine feminine expressions, right? Because the truth is, is that we all have pieces of this beautiful goddesses in us. We absolutely so do. Which, so which one are you? <laughs> Look, buy her book and see which one you are. <laughs> Everybody buy this book right now. <laughs> Everyone buy this book right now. All right, I think we need to do this again because there's so much more. In there's so much. Yeah, because you're at the beginning. I am at the beginning stage. So, so make sure you um, subscribe to Marisa's. Agachelas um, YouTube channel, and then um, you guys can check us out there whenever we get caught up, and uh, we'll announce it for part two of this conversation. Because I think it's it was very beautiful to talk about our books, but I think we share some so much uh, an infinity of greatness of love for one another, which also shows others how they can also be this for others as well. Of course, with boundaries, like we always teach, but. I, it was such a beautiful example between you and I. So thank you for holding that space for others and heart and soul activating. Thank you, thank sister. You so much. And everybody, um, please subscribe to Aurora's channels. And I, I have your website, everything on there. And I just love you so much. And thank you so much for all you do for humanity and for the mother, father, and for the universe. I love you. And I love you with all that I am. Thank you, everyone. I love you with all that I am as well. And um, follow her links. Love you. See you next time.